Finally, I I can't tell you, Falcons fans out there that you're listening uh, to and, and maybe watching the show on AtlantaFalcons.com, I am beyond excited for today's guest. And I'll, I don't want to, I want to get right into it, but today we have who I believe is the greatest running back in Falcons history. One of the best all time. If you guys know me, you know I love running backs and I put them right up there. Um with the best and i'm talking about walter payton tony dorsett um barry sanders is in a special class but i tell you what william andrews former atlanta falcons player career cut short and we'll get into all this he got better every single year statistically his runs you'll i can we'll put him up with anybody William, I am so stoked. I don't want to, I don't want, I want, I want to get going here, but I am, I just want to just convey how excited I am to finally have you on here for different reasons over the last few years. We haven't been able to get you on, but you're on. Welcome to Bird Noises presented by Bose. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you, man, for having me. I really do appreciate it. Well, listen, uh, you know, I want to talk about uh, your career here, obviously. I want to talk about, you know, your thoughts on, you know, some of the years that you were here, also just in the context of other great running backs. But, uh, you know, let's just start with two runs in particular, because I think you know, anybody can who has a phone or a computer can go to YouTube and watch these two runs. They both occurred in 1982. And I'm not sure, I'm, I'm hoping that you remember every single play in the play call here, because I can't get enough of them. They're, one was against, they, 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 they came in, two games within a three week span against the, the Denver Broncos and the San Francisco 49ers. And oddly enough, they were little swing passes. Yeah. <laughs> one was to the left. One was to the right. Let's talk about that Broncos game because it, it ended up being an 86 yard reception, but it was all run. Yeah. I mean, it was a pass to the flat. And, yeah. you know, you can mention the guy that, you know, you, you ran over. Well, uh, but, the, yeah, let's go uh, ahead. Let's get the, to that play. The, the play was set up basically because uh, it was a drop back pass. Steve had yep. uh, had to drop back. And we were, after we check our linebackers and where he is and that kind of thing, then we did like a little swing, a little swing hook, if you will. And to see, because we always had a saying, save a sack, throw it to the back. <laughs> so that's what <laughs> That's pretty much how Lynn and I were were in, involved in, in all our plays. We check our linebackers because we had to take care of outside linebackers. And once they did that, uh, then we were uh, swing routes because we were secondary receivers based on what he was doing. If he couldn't see his primary guys downfield, he knew he could get at least five yards or five to six yards from us of being in the backfield. Yeah, so you took – it was a quick hit to the flat to the left – and um, I, the, the defender who came up, was it Steve Wilson from the Broncos? Steve Wilson, yeah. Uh huh. He came up and it was within, you know, seconds, right? It was within, uh, you know, I think was he was right there on you within five yards. Yep. Well, and, the, well one of the things you got, I, <laughs> I always remember uh, with me, you had to wrap me up completely. And it couldn't just, it wasn't just one guy to do it. It's got to be more than one guy. And not bragging on myself, but that's just my a prowess and what I used to do when I ran. Now, what I did was I faked him to the left. Yeah. Faked him to the right. He didn't take either one of those. And then so the next move was to plow right through him. And I did so when I when I when I did that, I kind of uh, knocked him down and uh, it was clear sailing from right there. And then I got some help from downfield from Junior Miller and Alfred Jenkins down that down that sideline. And so that 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 made it go, and and uh, so I, I scored a touchdown that 86 yard run. Then yeah, I'm watching the replay right now. Uh, I've watched <laughs> it probably about 150 times, but uh, it was actually to be more accurate. You know, he Wilson came up. It was more like you had. I think you were you're about maybe five to seven yards downfield, um, and then you're right. You had an escort down there, but Tommy Jackson, the linebacker from the Broncos, yeah, Thomas Jackson, yep, uh, Hall of Famer. Yeah, um, really, really good linebacker. In fact, he was middle linebacker, you know, when the play started, I think you guys were in I formation. Uh, 
and he tried he tried to chase you down and dove at the end but uh you were a big man with a lot of speed i compare you to earl campbell um earl campbell was a was a big back powerful back with tons and tons of speed and i think you were right there um you know with with the same speed you you had very very i don't want to even say deceptive speed uh but that play was just uh you know that that's that's one that gets you off uh your seat uh in watching that one it's uh i'm watching it again you're kind of you've got you've got actually like three guys coming up on you and one guy thought you were tackled and just kind of was flat footed and uh, then you turned on the afterburners well, I got to tell you, uh, I don't have, I didn't have blazing speed. I just had enough speed to get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> and so as that, that, that play, you can tell, uh, um, yeah. guys were gaining on me. I did everything I could so they wouldn't catch me. So <laughs> th that's, that's what you got to always realize It's not how much speed you guys, not to make them, don't let them catch you. And I didn't say, and the thing of it is you never look back because yeah. when you look back, people can catch you. Yeah. Well, a lot of guys now they have the uh, the benefit of the jumbotrons, right? They, yeah, they're they're running, they're looking up, and they can they're watching the whole field behind them. <laughs> no, <laughs> sorry, that wasn't in our vocabulary back then. <laughs> Unfortunately, that was in '82. That was the strike shortened season too. Yeah, it um, was. Yeah, it was nine games. Yeah. Um, when you look at your career, and we're going to get to another run that season, but you know your your output, you ran for a thousand yards. Uh, 1023, 1308 in 1980, 1301 in 81. Then the strike shortened season, you had 573 in nine games. And then your best season, it was in 83, you ran for 1,567 yards. I'm not even talking about the reception. You had a few of those years, you had seven, more than 700 yards, more than 600 yards receiving. Um, and, and then, of course, you 84, you missed the season. We'll get into that. Um, but you ended up coming back in 86 um, and playing, but we'll get into that too. But let's, let's stay back on 82 because uh, it, I believe it was a Monday night game. Uh, and I want to say that only because it was Howard Cosell, Don Meredith, and Fran Tarkenton on the call. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure that was a Monday night game, which you guys, I don't think you guys were on a ton of Monday night games, were you? No, we were, we were not. And that play, I don't know. Do you remember that play before I uh, uh, explain yeah, it? Because a little swing it was, back when, when Ronnie came up to hit me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, Ronnie. That was a swing to the right this time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. You have to watch Ronnie a lot, right? Cause. Uh, Hall of Famer. Uh, yeah. Nasty yeah. He, and, and one of the, one of the greatest cats that I played against. And I got a there, there's a number of them I can name that I played against, but uh, he uh, was ta uh, talented as as all get up. Now he, you know, I learned from that he was a running back in in uh, high school. Yeah, yeah, I believe it. Instead of being that. a defense back, so I can see his prowess to come up and hit people like that. But yeah. uh, it just so happened it was a quick little quick flare to the right. Yeah, and I didn't have time to catch myself. So what I did is. I balled into the tightest ball I could get it myself into. And so all he hit, all he could hit was uh, just a solid uh, shoulder and, and thigh. And then he bounced off and I bounced away from him and went up and about four or five other guys hit me in the middle right there. And then I kept going and, and, and then the guy from the, came from the back and grabbed my shoulders. <laughs> you know, of course, that had been collar, collaring if it would. Horse collar. Yeah. You know, today's uh, uh, world, but uh, back then it was no such thing. So, uh, you know, every man for, for what he had and what he could have. And, and that's what it was. So, yeah, but, that was the, uh, but uh, I had, I, like I said, I, I can't, uh, when I go back and look over the, what I used to do, uh, I'm satisfied with uh, some of the things that I've, I've accomplished and all that kind of thing. So I can't be, I, I'm not sad about anything. I love playing the game. And uh, I had a love for it. I didn't, it wasn't out there for money or anything like that. Cause I wasn't making that much, but I was enjoying myself cause I had a good time. Yeah. I, I would, I would, yeah, you had a, uh, it was not as long as it should have been. Um, we'll get into that, but on that play to be fair to you, 
it, Ronnie Lott was like lined up on the line of scrimmage. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I'm watching the replay right now. As soon as you look the ball in, I mean, in a split second, the minute you looked upfield, he was in your grill. Yeah. And Ronnie Lott, everybody knows he hits like a Mack truck. Oh, yeah, he does. But, you know, but I'm the repair guy. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, he needed a repair after that. Uh, so, you know, I'm look. I'm just watching the replay here. I'm just reliving it because I can't. You know, you it, what a backfield too. It was you and I believe Gerald Briggs, right? Yeah, we had well, Lynn Kane was. Oh, I'm sorry. And then, I'm sorry. Then Lynn Gerald Kane. Came, then Gerald came in. I uh, think the next couple of years. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm I'm watching. I'm okay. So let me call the play up here. So Bar- they almost jumped offside. Barkowski like literally just steps, snaps it, steps, throws it. Correct. I mean, it was a like a two, three yard pass. Yep. And you're just getting up to you're not even beyond the line of scrimmage and, and a lot is hitting you. That's what I mean. I had I, I got no speed. So when I saw him out of the corner of my right eye, that's when I gathered myself and got into that ball. And yeah. he, all he did was hit shoulder and die. That's all he yeah. could hit. Now and- I just paused it here there right. are one two three four you are in a circle a yeah. red circle of Correct. red 49er jerseys all of them have their heads down hitting you it's almost like it was timed they they are hitting you at the same time yeah yeah and you <laughs> have your head down and they fly like bowling pins and you're downfield and how and, and I listened to the audio, Howard Cosell, I don't know if it was I don't know if it was Howard Cosell or 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 Fran Tarkin, one of them jumped out of their seat in the in the booth on the call. Um, and because they were stunned. And Howard Cosell said he called it the greatest, as good at evidence of power running in any game you'll ever see. The late great Howard Cosell said there, uh, as you were uh, coming back to the the huddle. But man, if it wasn't you, and you had a you had an escort too for that one. You had like five guys, and somehow Eric Wright comes in between yeah, all of them comes, and, yeah, and he, catches he, you. Catches he you. comes from behind you. <laughs> yeah. Did you, yeah, did, the, you did you did you give some of your your teammates a little uh, crow for that? Just, one of the guys let the door left the door open, so that's what happened. Because <laughs> that would have been, I'm telling you what. I mean, it it is a highlight film uh, type run, and and it's uh, here we are. What twenty. 2021 and and still talking about it uh still excited uh you were a four-year pro at the time 26 years old out of auburn and who uh which you know you had some pretty good backs there too well well uh, when you were i'm, I'm kind of mad i'm kind of upset because they didn't have it one of the greatest runs you know <laughs> i know you know, they got all these guys that got all these great runs and i said huh yeah. i had some just like that but they didn't put mine in there and and, and you know yeah. you got to look at it I understand. Uh, see, I was a true fullback. I was not a running back or a tailback. I was a true fullback, and they don't have those anymore, right? Yeah. So, not, I mean, there's you can you can count on one hand how many teams yeah, actually so, have one on the roster. Correct. So the tailback and the fullback are completely different two positions because one's a two, and I'm always in a three position. Yep. And a, and the three position is directly behind the quarterback. So uh, I had most of my most enjoyable time behind. Uh, the quarterback because I could see everything that's going on. I knew it. I knew what every lineman did up, up front. I knew which way the quarterback was going to step out and do what he had to do and that kind of thing. Because our job was to protect him on the, at, at any point, at any time. Well, I'll tell you what. Then you make it even stronger your, an even stronger case to be in the Hall of Fame, William. Because if you're saying that I'm a fullback, uh, you sh- you show me a fullback that runs for 15, 1,300, 1,500 yards every season. And catches catches passes out of the backfield like a scat back, like a third down back. Right. And has the power, you know, of a tight end running. Um that, that you you were a uh you were something that you know there were very few of in the NFL. I was, I was a true all purpose back. Oh, for because sure. I, because I never came out. On third downs, I could run a route just as good as the wide receivers, I could catch just as good as any of them. 
in the whole nine yards. So they never brought me out when it came to that. The only, only, the only way they brought me out, it was second half and we were so far ahead that they just sat me down and arrested me. That's the only time I came out. <laughs> It's unbelievable. And so uh, people can go look up those runs on YouTube and uh, just search William Andrews Broncos, William Andrews 49ers. Uh, I think the other one's called William Andrews runs over Ronnie Lott. Um, and they can watch them get the popcorn out and, and scream like I do. Uh, I'll tell you what, your your seasons, uh, you know, we've, we just went over your seasons and, in, in, you know, 84. Um, you were getting better as, as each year you were in the league. And then you had that devastating uh, injury uh, yeah. that really, in essence, in essence, um, ended your career. I know you came back in 86, but what do you remember of that? And it, if you can go back to that, uh, were you, just describe what happened and if you want and just describe what, what must have been going through your mind. And um, did you know it was as bad as it was going to be? Well, I, I can go back and I look at what, what happened that day, you know, uh, at the time I wasn't in training camp because we were discussing, uh, my contract, uh, increasing my pay. And so that's the reason I wasn't in, 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 in training camp, uh, like everybody else was to get started. And the day that they signed me, I came in and start going through the drills and all like that. I was in the probably best shape I was in all my, all my, my life at that time. Mm. And uh, so I came out to practice and uh, I've run this play a uh, hundred times, man. And uh, when I made a cut, uh, I made a cut and uh, one of the linebackers that uh, I'd always played against and he, um, I made a cut on him. And when I made the cut and planted my left foot, uh, everything went haywire then. And uh, so I, uh, I felt it immediately that I had mm. torn something really bad. Didn't know what it was, but at the time, uh, uh, he caught me and laid me down. I said, "Just lay me down here." I said, "I'm hurt. I'm hurt pretty bad." So he mm. did, and the trainers came over and ran over and grabbed me and took me inside. and And uh, they looked. They took. They looked at it, and the leg, my knee was swelling. They said, "Boy, he did something." And so they took me downtown. Uh, mm. back, uh, to uh, Piedmont. And yeah. uh, I tell you, I didn't know I was that popular when they stopped and they cut in on all soap operas. <laughs> they stopped all the soap operas to announce that I got injured <laughs> and I was on my way down to Piedmont. So when I got down there, there was a young doctor by the name of Evie Hunter. Mm -hmm. She's the one that examined me. And yeah. uh, she said, oh, my God, William, she said, you really messed this up. And they took that craze and saw what was going on. And I had damaged three of the four major ligaments. And uh, so she said it was like a little explosion in there. And I had torn all of the ligaments. Uh, and the only thing that was left intact was the media, which was the inside ligament. Yeah, That's yeah. the only thing I had left. Wow. And of course, back then they don't have, they didn't have the, you know, they've come so far with arthroscopic surgery oh, yeah, oh, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, you know, in, in reconstruction surgery. Yeah, um, they just didn't have that back then. Uh, they yeah. just, they but you just know, I, I got my hats off to John Garrett. My hats off to John Garrett and his staff, and uh, his his team and what they did for me because mm -hmm. John was out of town and at the time uh, Evie Hunter was there to, to not to administer the surgery, but she was there to do the diagnosis. And when he got back, uh, he they brought him off vacation. He came back and. Uh, that uh, uh, that afternoon, they did surgery on. He did surgery on me, and uh, he told me what I was up against and that kind of thing. He said, uh, uh, "William, don't look like you're gonna be able to play again." I said, "Well, you know, the thing I'm looking to do is, if I can get in the yard and play with the kids, I'll be happy." I said, "But uh, if mm. football is gone, it's gone. But I just want to be able to have the ability to get in the yard and play with the kids, and that that it." And so the good Lord blessed mm. me enough to have. Uh, that aspect of my thinking to uh, get me back up and going because it took me about 23 months to get myself back. And that's a long time to be out and then trying to come back because you got younger players that's going to be a lot faster and stronger and that kind of thing. But I, I went yeah. through I went through the process of uh, trying to uh, return. And then again, um, I left on my terms, uh, not uh, somebody had to cut me or anything like that. 
So William, you got that news and I can't even imagine how devastating to hear the words, hey, you know, I think it's over. Um, did, did they tell you that before you tried to come back or did they tell you that after you said, you know what, I'm leaving on my terms? No, it had happened before. Uh, okay, so after they, I had they the surgery. You. After, okay. I, I, after I had the surgery, they said, William, you blew three of the four major ligaments. Right. And we had never seen a player come back off of something like that. Wow. So I would strongly that uh, think that you would uh, want to consider retirement. I said, well, here's the thing. You know, I came in a winner and I'm going to leave a winner. So uh, as I told him, I said, look, I would rather go out and try to see if I could, as opposed to you just telling me just to walk away from it. Leave so no I did doubt. that. I did that. So I, I left no doubt in my mind because I know when I can do something. And, and you, you know, of course, you know, when you can't do anything either, sure. but I had to, I had to, I had to find out for myself whether I could or whether I couldn't. And so uh, came to the conclusion when they start moving me around on the offense and that kind of thing, I knew it was time because the coaches uh, uh, wasn't uh, looking at it like I was looking at it for me to come back and see if I could play again. If they, if not, you know, no need of playing with it. And I don't need anybody playing politics with my injury or anything like that. So for I sure. told, I said, look, so let me, I said, let me get a hold of Mr. Smith. Let me go talk to him. And he and I have that conversation because that's the one that pays me. Mm -hmm. And so I would rather go to him in, in honest to sit down and have a strong conversation with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I suggested that uh, the trainers, uh, Jerry Ray, he said, William, I think that's a great idea. He said, why don't you go sit with Mr. Smith and see uh, where you guys are. And I think that'd be the best thing for you. So I did that. And Mr. Smith was actually happy that I came in to sit down and talk with him. And I said, nice. Look, you know, I've done everything I, I, I know to do for this organization. And y'all have been really great to me. And I do appreciate everything you've done, I think. But I think it's time to hang my cliques up. And so mm. he said, William, he said, I hate to lose you because you were one hell of a one that we've ever had. So I said, well, Mr. Mm -hmm. Smith, I appreciate the opportunity you gave me to be a part of the organization. And so we left it at that. And uh, uh, that afternoon, we announced that my retirement. And so uh, here I stay in the day just as happy as I can be and that I made the decision and not them. Well, you will go down as one of the great, uh, certainly you're in the Falcons, Atlanta Falcons ring of honor. Um, you know, had that injury not occurred, you know, there's no question in my mind and probably in your mind that you would be the franchise's all time leading rusher. Um, it's just, you know, when I look at your numbers and when I look at your career, and, and I look at the teams you were on, you weren't on, you know, you, it's not like you guys were perennial playoff teams. Right. Do you think that hurts you when it comes to the hall of fame conversation? Cause you look at other running backs and I'm talking about tailbacks uh, who are in the hall of fame. I mean, you, you hold your own now, look a lot. Of, I might, people, people might get on me for comparing you to Gail Sayers, but Gail Sayers is a guy that comes to mind whose career was cut short like yours, right? Oh, yeah. Who was, who was a fantastic, unbelievable runner, unlike anything we had ever seen. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Uh, I'm not saying that you and, we, and, and Gail Sayers are the same kind of back. You're not. Um, but when you just look at the length of your careers and the production of your careers, it's very similar. And he's like, you know, a no brainer into the Hall of Fame. Um, I don't know. I just, do you ever think about that part of it? And then I just want to ask you a question about no, Atlanta Falcons in general in the Hall of Fame. I don't, I don't, I don't think about that because, you know, okay. when I look at Gail Sayers, right, Gail Sayers was a guy that could stop on a dime and give you five cents chain. Unbelievable. That's just the yeah. way he was. And uh, when I look at Jim Brown, I look at Jim Brown, I look at OJ Simpson, mm -hmm. I looked at all those guys. I never played with OJ, never played with Gayers. But I play, I mean, uh, Jim Brown, uh, right. Gale, but I played with uh, OJ. And uh, he was one, probably one of the most prolific uh, backs I've ever seen in my life. A lot of me, a lot of guys called me Juice just because I wore the number in college, but I, would, I wouldn't even Auburn. know what his caliber. <laughs> but but uh, as I, uh, you know, came into prominence in the uh, 
Falcons organization when I was a rookie. I had an opportunity to meet OJ and I, I said, man, it's an honor to meet you. He said, no, man, it's an honor to meet you. He said, you're up and coming, man. I really like your style. So I, you know, I get compliments like that from other guys, even with uh, uh, my buddy that played at San Francisco. Uh, uh, I forget the running back's name that was at San Francisco at the time, Roger Craig. Oh, Roger and I, yeah. Roger had uh, at similar styles of running like I do, high knee, low low to the ground and that kind of thing. And so Roger and I had a chance to spend some time after we got out of the league. And uh, and, and I said, man, I, man, I, you one hell of a guy. He said, what, what are you talking about, man? You are. I said, man, look, all I was trying to do was get out the way. <laughs> he, said, <laughs> he said, well, hell, you did a good job. Of that. <laughs> so, but I get, I get a kick out of talking to the old guys back in the day as to when we played. Now, yeah. back to our conversation concerning me being a, a tailback and, and the other running backs, right? Yeah. See, they can't compare me to anybody else other than a fullback, okay? I talked to the guys that was here at the Black College Hall of Fame, I guess, a couple of years ago. And I said, let me ask you a question. Why did you guys just looked over fullbacks? Yeah. I said, the last fullback to ever go in the Hall of Fame was Larry Zonka. Mm. Okay. I was just going to ask you who you yeah. thought the best fullback was. Well, in... that's who it was, Larry Zonka. Yeah, number 39. Uh, okay, so Dolphins. I'm saying, come on now. And you're going to compare us to running backs? I said, we were fullbacks, true yeah. fullbacks. So you got to have a category for fullback as opposed to lumping everybody in as running back. I said, because we don't do the same thing. And we don't. Larry Zonka. Um, <laughs> you know, Larry Zonka... Great back. He played for the Giants and the the Dolphins. Everyone knows that he was on that, um, you know, undefeated team, right? And so, Great. you know, I'm sitting here. I'm pulling up just in case you're wondering. I'm pulling up his stats. He had one, two, three, three seasons where he, you know eclipsed a thousand yards. He played a long time. Yeah. Um, he played nine, ten, eleven years. Right. In the league, was on some really, really good teams. And that, you know, that, that always helps your case, right? Oh yeah. Um, no question about it. No question about it. Being in Atlanta, it, it, you, you know, in, in just, it's, it's just tough. It's just tough. Uh, you know, because that's what I wanted to ask you too. You know, when you look, but let's, but let's yeah. look at it, let's look at it on the merit though. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just from the merit standpoint. Okay. Nothing else. Right. Yep. I was a fullback. fullback. I wasn't a running back. I right. wasn't a tailback. I was a fullback. Don't change categories when you have full boats, fullbacks putting up numbers like tailbacks. Exactly. Don't do it that. That's that's the wrong way to do it. So that's the case I'm, that needs to be made. <laughs> I yes. argued with these guys. I said, look, I was a true fullback. I wasn't a tailback. I didn't line up seven yards. I said, let me ask you a question. Who gets to the who gets to the line of scrimmage quicker than the tailback? The fullback. I'm only three and a half yards from the tailback. The tailback got seven yards to make his mind up. I only got one. That's it. That's right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they they give me a hard time about it. I said, but look, you got to admit, who got to make their mind up quickest? Yeah. Fullback or the tailback? Yep. I said, you got seven yards in the middle and pee around down in the back of me. And when I get the handoff, I got to make my mind up in two steps. Well, in, in a lot of times too, in a lot of cases, you know, the fullback is doing is is treated like a pulling guard or a bl exactly. like a tight end, and they're exactly. not getting. And I did it all. <laughs> the, the touches, like the, like the, the you know the big tailback. I um, did it all. Not bragging on myself, but I did it all. No, you did I mean, do it all. I got and evidence. I got yes. evidence. Yes, and people need to go watch and and look and compare. I need to make that. I need to. I'm. You know what? I'm going to do what I can on the stage that I have. It's not maybe not the biggest stage, but I'm going to start making some noise for you. We've tried with Tommy Novus. We're going to keep trying with Tommy Novus. Well, but we've Tommy, got to get you yeah, in the Hall of I, Fame. I agree with you 100%. But there's other guys that I look at that should be there prior to me, right? You had Jeff Van Note, which plays the longest center in, in Falcon history, and Mike Ken, one yep. of the greatest uh, offensive linemen that I've ever played with and or against. Uh, Mike held his own in a number of years that he played there. And this guy still looks like he still can play. Not but, disagreeing with you at but all. The fact, that nope. the, the fact yep. of the matter is they, uh, we had some sports guys here in Atlanta 
that didn't like the organization of Rankin Smith and the Falcon. And so Firmer Bishop is one of them that he didn't give us any kind of uh, coverage or anything like that. The only thing he did was bad mouth us. But the point I'm saying is you can't go and let one guy take over the setup of what a team does because mm -hmm. you've got more than one player. You know, you can have one voice in the newspaper, but hell, we got 22 guys out there playing, both on 11 on offense, 11 on defense. So you got to look at the merit of what these guys are doing, not just because you don't like the owner or the other team itself. You can't exactly. do that. That's that's a that's a that's a disservice to us because we out there giving everything we got, giving our hearts in terms of entertaining people. And the one thing you got to remember about me. I gave everything I could on the field. I left it out there. I didn't take any home. I left it on the field. And when I left, I left the game uh, on my on my, my term and, and not everybody else's. I love that. No doubts. But, you know, when I look at the Hall of Fame, you're in the Ring of Honor, deservedly so, Atlanta Falcons Ring of Honor. When I look at the Atlanta Falcons who are in the Hall of Fame, you're going to see where I'm going with this. Tommy McDonald, Eric Dickerson, Deion Sanders, Chris Dolman, Claude Humphrey, Brett Favre, Morton Anderson, Tony Gonzalez, and then Norm Van Brocklin, head coach. Right. Most of those guys made their marks on other teams. Deion, Deion made an impact here. Right. Claude Humphrey made an impact here, but then he went to Philadelphia. Correct. It just feels like to me, when you talk about the players that you just mentioned who aren't who are not in the Hall of Fame, yourself included, Tommy Nobis, Mr. Falcon, the first ever draft pick. Yeah, for sure. Uh, who was, you know, on the cover of, you know, Life magazine and Time magazine and Sports Illustrated. You got Heisman votes coming out of Texas. Um, played on some bad teams. You played on one, I believe, one winning team, right? You had a yeah. couple teams that won seven 19, games. 1980, yeah. Yeah, I want to ask you about that, that was team. The but yeah, great, great team. Um, but it just, it just, it just, it just looks the optics of it just don't don't, don't look good. Don't 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 mess it, now well it, with it, me. It doesn't add up with me either because I played with these guys and against some of the guys that you mentioned, right? Yep. The thing I wish is Mike Ken and Jeff Van Note. If I had to look at two players that was on the Falcons and, and also Tommy, because I didn't play with Tommy, right. but I played with Jeff Van Noten and Mike Ken. Yep. These two guys right here are my heroes in terms mm -hmm. of what they helped me do mm -hmm. out there on the field because they protected me like nobody's business. When I was running, they said, look, just tell me what you want us to do and I'll do it. And that's what they did. So that that you gotta you gotta realize that, 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 that as you play against guys, you get to know who they really are. Yeah. And all of these guys that you mentioned are perfect gentlemen when it comes to what they can do and how they do it and what they do in, in all season and what they do in doing season. So I got a I got mad respect for all of them. And I'm just uh uh not bitter, but I'm disappointed in how the selections are done based on what they talk about Hall of Fame. Every one of those guys are Hall of Fame candidates. I can tell you that right now. Uh, you got guys that uh, that hadn't been in the league long and they all of a sudden they in the hall, really? You gotta be kidding me. You ain't seen these guys. I said, they, uh, number, number two is they don't work as hard as we used to. I mean, they, they, they I mean, you know, they get a hangnail. They can, they can sit out for a couple of games. We couldn't do that. <laughs> I know, I'm making jokes, but but the fact that no, I is, hear you. No, well taken. I, I, get, the, it. I get it. <laughs> the fact that the matter is, you can stub your toe, man. You won't see him for two weeks. I said, what's up with that? And you know what they did? They cut our shoe, man, so our big toe would stick out of the shoe, <laughs> and we still play, man. Come on now. <laughs> These guys are come getting on. ten pair, yeah. ten pair said, of shoes come on, a week. Man. <laughs> come I said, on. "Come on, man! Don't do that." <laughs> uh, well, that's a great segue. Let's, you know, I, I want to ask you. Let's play a little. Uh, this will kind of uh, maybe evoke some stories, some thoughts, but also, uh, you know, feel free to go where you want with this. But I just want to just say a word or a phrase or a name, and all you have to do is just say the first thing, first thought that comes to your mind, and we'll just keep going. If you want to okay. expand on that afterwards, go all ahead. Right. 
And I tried to think of some guys that played along the same time you did as well. Uh, but here we go. Are you ready? This is yeah. a bird noises hot seat here. Uh, best team you ever played on. 1980. Yeah, we, we established that one. The hardest hitter you ever faced. Vad Brand Pelt. Oh, number 10 linebacker of the oh, Giants. Oh, God, that man, that was a stone. He was a stone, man. Let me tell you. Wow. This cat was a stone, man. And True I made, story. I had his jersey oh, growing up. I had My dad was a Giants fan, made me this wear This guy was a stone. He was stone, man. Yeah. I've never, I've never hit anybody this hard. I've never tried. This guy, I went and hit him, man, and I saw damn birds flying around my head. I said, God. I, and I used to tell you play with some good linebackers too, yeah, Harry Carson. Tell, yeah, I used to tell Lynn, I said, Lynn, look, I can't move this guy. I said, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to position myself so you can make the best cut you can. I said, but this boy is stone, I can't move. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You don't hear a lot of people talk about Brad Van Pelt, but he was uh, good. Man, look, hey, hey, look, you know, <laughs> this is what I'm telling you, man. I play with some great ones. You hear me? And these guys were stone. This guy was a, a stone. He was like an anvil. You had to have some strength to move this cat. <laughs> I was not expecting that. All right. Um, that's awesome. Biggest trash talker you ever came across? Biggest trash talker? Uh, Hollywood Henderson. Oh, number 56 for the Cowboys. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I believe it. I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what's the funniest or weirdest thing uh, he ever said to you? Do you that you remember, or that you just he recall him talking about? Oh, that I wasn't gonna gain three yards. Yeah. I said really. <laughs> <laughs> I said I'm gonna gain three, and I'm gonna gain three on you. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you had, you talked a little trash too. No, uh, no, but but I knew what I was gonna do. I didn't. I wasn't yeah. there to play with him. Yeah. But it's nevertheless, good, good, great guy though, great guy. Yeah, meet him amazing in person, story, right? Meet, meet him in person, great cat. I mean, I yeah. I, I, I like him. I, I don't have any, his life around yeah. anything against him. I, but uh, you know, uh, I think they do it because they're not sure of themselves and what they're gonna do that day. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. And when he started talking trash to everybody else, I mean, I've been talked trash to for, uh, most of my life. So what? The, what the hell is the difference? <laughs> <laughs> do you remember when he won the lottery? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, what did, what sure did you do. think when he won? Man, I was happy for him. Okay. I, was, I said, man, this song going to won a lot. I said, it, I said, uh, you know, this cat, I, I played against this cat. Yeah. And all of a sudden now he done won the damn lot. I said, that, I mean, but that's, that's just karma though. You know what I mean? Yeah. He had some tough times. Yeah. Um, but boy, was he good though. Yeah, he was. He was no question about it. And good. played at HBCU. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Hey. And then most of the guys, I got to tell you this, most of the guys that I've played against, some of the best guys I've ever played in, in my life went to HBCU. Now, I went to a predominantly black, white college, right? But oh, these man. guys went to black. And I tell you, they are some of the greatest cats that I remember in my whole NFL time, uh, uh, season. These guys were great. Deion Sanders, head coach now, right? Yeah, and, and loving it, right? Loving it. I know Dion, the younger cat, but uh, that was another t crash trash talker too. That, but yeah, he yeah, could yeah. back his up because he had speed and he can. Get, he had some giddy up in his his shoes. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, he was he was good. He was. But I wish him well up. though. I wish him well though. Yeah, it's a great story. Hope hope yeah. he has success there. All right, best player you ever shared the field with, either it could be on your team or uh, someone you played against. Uh, 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 Walter Payton. Yeah, sweetness. Yeah. Um, meanest or dirtiest player you ever played with or against? Conrad Dobler. Okay. Earl Campbell. Baddest cat I've ever seen. Tony Dorsett. The smoothest I've ever seen. Walter Payton. Fearsome. This cat was fearless. I mean, he was fearsome. He really was. Barry Sanders. This guy, um, you know, Barry is one of the most unique cats I've ever had the opportunity to watch. This guy could run sideways faster than I could run up the field. That's a great and description. Yeah. Could get 
a yardage as he was running sideways. That's a god dang, that's the craziest thing I've ever seen. But what a back. What a back, man. You're not lying. Gerald Riggs. Gerald, power and speed for a big guy. All right, your QB one. Well, one of them anyway. Steve Barkowski. One of the finest quarterbacks I played with in all my career. I was looking at your stats and someone I work with, I didn't realize, but I should have, Dave Archer. Dave, probably one of the best cats that I know as far as uh, uh, just his, his mental attitude in terms of what he was going to do when he had to do it on, on a daily basis. Now for a really, really important question. What do you think of the name Bird Noises? I never heard of it before, <laughs> but it's squawking real loud right now. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I am so glad that you came on and we are going to start. We got to get you in the hall, man. We, and we got to get those other guys too. Well, um, but it's time. It's time. And it's you know, just, you know I got to tell you though, the man. The fullback you know, argument though. Oof. Well, here's the thing. Uh, and, and let me be blunt about this. And Please I do. don't care. I don't care who knows it or, or whatever. They've got young kids trying to uh, say who should and who shouldn't. Uh, these young guys that are uh, sports writers and all that kind of stuff, they never seen the caliber players we were when we were back in that day. So don't give me this about this guy coming out of college, he all world, he all is. Well, he yeah. hadn't been through anything. You get the guys that's been through some trenches and, and some mud holes and that kind of thing, and then you come talk to me. But right now, don't do not do that because these guys couldn't hold, uh, these, these guys couldn't carry these guys' jock straps. Uh, the young guys today couldn't carry these old guys jock strap. I can tell you that right now. They couldn't. <laughs> I'm so and, glad and like you brought up Brad like Van Pelt. Yeah, man, look, I'm telling you, that guy, man, was so, I mean, he was like a pillar of stone. Mm. And, and I bet and, you, I'm, to your point, though, I bet you a lot of sports writers today, not, not, I don't know, I don't want to say that, but maybe some of the younger ones, they, they probably couldn't tell you a whole lot about Brad Van Pelt. No, they couldn't, the but I can't. Column is good, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're I aging can't. ourselves. We're aging ourselves a little bit. <laughs> but uh, uh, but don't get me wrong. Yeah, the finest player that I could ever play against because he kept me honest. Mm -hmm. Okay, I couldn't just go out there, you know, have hazardous and try to do what I need to do with him. He said, "I'm here to play, and I'm gonna play all day." And trust me, he was there all day to play all day. Oh, and man. most guys don't do that. They can't do it. But this guy was there all day, every day. William Andrews, I uh, I am so glad you came on. I It's a pleasure and an honor to finally meet you. I hope when this pandemic is over, I get to meet you in person. Hey, I'm, um, well, I'm looking forward to that now because, uh, you know, I, I learned about your squawk box now, man. We in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, I tell you what, I, if, if, if anybody knows where I can buy an Atlanta Falcons throwback jersey with the red numerals, white jersey, I want a number 31. I want a bad. That's a bad man right there. You're a bad man. And thank you. You're a great man and a humble man. And uh, it, was, it, was, it was my pleasure. Thanks for coming out. And please, no. let's do it again. No, no, I wish you would. I, I mean, I would love to be involved in uh, what you guys are doing because I hear what you guys are doing are, are, are pretty fabulous. And uh, hmm. my hat's off to Brinley. Oh, uh, yeah, Brinley Fork. Yep, she's awesome. For, for uh, you know, thinking of me uh, to come on your show. And uh, she is one great gal that I, we, sure we, we, we treat her like our sister because we always <laughs> call her. <laughs> and she said, okay, William, what do you need today? <laughs> so, but she's always been there for us. Uh, she's uh, her awesome. And, uh, her and uh, my buddy Winston uh, out there. Kevin they Winston. Do a good job. They do a good job for, our, for the older guys. Yep. And uh, I just can't, my hat's off to her. I just can't do nothing but praise her because she's some kind of gal and we love her. Yeah, Kevin Winston and Brimley Fork. Yeah. They are two awesome yeah. people. They they are. Um, yeah, I you know, I've been here I got here in May of 2017 
And uh, I pass, you know, Kevin's office every day on the way out the door before pandemic. And I pass Brinley's desk on the way, way to lunch uh, every day. So right. you, knew, you knew I was going to see them both. And uh, two of my favorite people in Flowery Branch, no question about it. No question about it. No question about no question it. About and it. Uh, they, they are some fabulous folk. And uh, I just really been, I love being a part of them so that we can be a part of you guys. Yeah. And the good news from all this too is, is that I... I Brindley won't have to hear me say, can I get William Andrews? Can I get William Andrews? <laughs> <laughs> now, now I'm going to yeah. say, can I get him back? Can I get him back? Yeah, I think I'm on speed dial with her. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, man, I appreciate you. And uh, I don't know if you read straight from the beak, but whenever I can bring up running backs and whenever I can bring up Falcons running backs, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm sure to plug you. I've had you in a couple uh, centerpieces on the, on the website. So, uh, you know, if you ever see a picture on the site, you know, I'm probably uh, grinning. Uh, well, I, well, I do appreciate it. And then also, I, I'd just like to mention hats off to uh, all of the uh, great ones that we've uh, lost. Yeah. Uh, Hank Aaron and uh, Don oh, yeah. Sutton and some other guys that uh, we have lost uh, in our midst month. because yeah. these guys were uh, heroes of mine and a lot of other guys, even though we played different sports, but they yep. still were heroes. And so uh, my condolences to the families and that kind of thing. So if that's part of uh, what I could do before I leave your, your show, I would like to certainly mention uh, that those are passing and uh, we really do uh, just uh, miss them and appreciate them. You know, it's, it's, it's great. You bring that up because, you know, talking to you, it's, it brings back, you know, a great part of my childhood when I was just first learning the game and my dad was taking me to Giants games right? and Patriots games. I grew up in upstate New York and, um, you know, you guys weren't on TV a lot, but um, I, I do remember the 80 season. I remember the playoff game against the Cowboys. I remember a lot of those games, but we, you, you talk about Brad Van Pelt. I mean, I would have never expected anybody to bring up Brad Van Pelt. You talk about Don Sutton. You know, when I was a kid, you know, everybody where I went to school, you know, were Yankee fans. And it was Yankees Dodgers, if you remember, every year it felt right, like, right, or at right. least, at least back to back years, right? Correct. And Don Sutton was, was you know, the curly hair, great pitcher. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and then you talk about the king, Hank Aaron. Oh, yeah. Oh, everybody yeah. knew, everybody knew the king, Hank Aaron. And yep, yep. just like they knew Pele, right? Just like yep. they knew, right? And uh, it's awesome that you bring those up, uh, those names up. And it's sad that we've lost them. And, uh, you know, I put your name right up with the great ones in my childhood and my memories. And uh, it's been great. And look forward to talking to you again. And, and stay healthy, be well. And uh, I'm going to do my best. You too. And, uh, you know, just uh, keep your head down. <laughs> you got it. I'm a grinder. You know it. I got you. Well, that's great. Uh, thank you so much for having me on your show. I really do appreciate it. And anytime I can ever be of service, uh, I'm right here. All right, William. If I can keep my head down and have guys bounce off me like you did, I'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, take care of yourself.